Dude, do you think this would look good on me? Yeah, man, super cute. It'll look nice on you. Right? Yeah. Oh man, you know what I miss? What? Going out with my family to buy clothes. I know, right? You know what I really miss? As a kid, I used to go out with my family for rest for dinners and restaurant, right? So every time we would leave, we'll go to the reception, take that menu card so that we could place order. We know what changed. And while the change is great and it brings in a lot more convenience and access to a lot of restaurants, the real question is how did Zomato mark its dominance in food delivery industry? In today's episode of One Bite at a Time, we are going to look at how Zomato predicts CTA and how it markets dominance. Rise of Zomato Did you know that Zomato was named as Foodie Bay in 2008? It was later renamed as Zomato in 2010 as they were unsure if they would stick to just food and also to avoid potential name conflict with eBay. It first started off as a platform to discover and search various restaurants and now it provides online food delivery services as well. Founded by Dipinder Goyal and Pankaj Chadda, the idea of Food eBay took birth in their company where they used to face issue while standing in the long queue for a very long time just to glance at the menu. Food eBay started scanning various menus of various restaurants and started uploading them on their company's private network. Soon, employees of their company started using and relying on this website, which in turn brought a lot of traffic on their website. After checking the success rate in their company, they made this service available to public. After renaming and taking off the restrictions, the next big thing for the company was to launch a mobile application which was the need of the hour. But this required more funding, so they managed to get Sanjeev Bikchandnani of Naukri.com to invest 1 million USD through InfoEdge. They kept receiving more investment in the following years. In 2011, they got 3.5 million USD. In 2012, they got 10 million USD of investment. So as they kept growing, the biggest struggle was to list down all the restaurants in important places in the city where people might most likely visit. But today, Zomato stands as the largest restaurant guide in Asia. Zomato started its own food delivery service in the year 2015, partnering with companies like Delivery and Grab to fulfill deliveries for restaurants who did not have their own delivery service. Today, Zomato is not just for looking up restaurants and writing reviews about them, it is standing at the top of the list of food delivery apps in India. But the real question is, with the millions of orders that Zomato received and delivered every day, how does it not just deliver food on time but also keep its customers up to date on the estimated time of arrival? The power of data science behind Zomato. What happens when you place an order? In the food delivery ecosystem, multiple handshakes happen at the same time. Various components are involved, the time taken by the restaurant to prepare the order, the time taken by the delivery partner to reach the restaurant and the time taken by the delivery partner to finally reach the customer's address. All of these elements are taken into account by Zomato to create a timeline for the customer's food delivery ETA. Needless to say that the scalability of the business depends on better FPT prediction. What factors contribute to FPT prediction? There can be various factors that affect FPT for a particular dish. Let's assume you ended up ordering biryani from two different restaurants, say R1 and R2. Here, R1 is a restaurant which is specialized in making biryani, whereas R2 is a restaurant which is a multi-cuisine restaurant as biryani is one of their dishes. It is naturally expected that R1 will have lesser FPT as compared to R2 as their kitchen will be far more optimized to prepare the food order in less time. However, this was just one of the factors. There are additional factors like queued orders. There are number of orders already in queue for each of these restaurants. It is possible that one of the restaurants will have a long queue while the other one would not have any active orders. Number 2. Fine Dine versus Delivery Kitchen If one of the restaurants is a fine dine establishment and the second one is a delivery kitchen, it is expected that the second one will have a shorter FPT. Number 3. Opening Hours this refers to the period when the restaurant is open for delivery. Has it opened just now or has it been open for a while? There are soft parameters that convey whether the kitchen will be in full flow or not. And lastly, other items in your order. Along with chicken biryani, what else did you order for? Can these items be prepared parallelly or do they have to be prepared sequentially? And also, will these items will have a higher or lower FPT? All of these factors come to a great play. 
How did Zomato encode these components? All the factors we discussed previously are for humans behind the system to understand and develop their technology to give out efficient results. But how did Zomato encode all of these factors? Here, the process is divided into two components, item level information and restaurant level information. Let's look at these one by one. First, encoding item level information. In order to use this text information in ML models, there are common methods which can be used, which are bag of words, TF-IDF, or word to vec embedding. So the first two methods are one hot encoding where the data is converted into formats to help predict better. Given that the dishes on the platform are extensive, this could have added millions of columns to the data if bag of words or TF-IDF was used. Hence, Zomato uses word to vec to embed its item level information in lesser memory and also allows the model to learn the behavior of similar items in terms of cuisine and preparation style. Next, encoding restaurant level information. Given that in a month, food is ordered from 150,000 plus restaurants, understanding how these restaurants are numerically represented for the machine learning model is the biggest part of this puzzle. Restaurants are represented in categorical data, which is very common in business datasets. For example, users are typically described by their country, age or gender. A product is typically described by the product type, manufacturer and seller. Now, the most used category representations are one-hot encoding, encoding categories with dataset statistics or the same with cluster labels. The basic premise is that Zomato lets neural networks calculate the best representation for the restaurant by itself. Entity embedding is a vector representation of an entity. In this case, it's a restaurant itself. How does Zomato train its model? Zomato makes use of KG Boost to pass entity embedding architecture to get final restaurant representation. They are also making use of deep learning architecture and also moving towards reinforcement learning which produces real-time errors observed at a restaurant level. Given that food preparation represents real-time behavior, making such systems will ensure that users have a smoother tracking experience. Zomato is now set to begin with intercity nationwide food delivery where they will deliver food from different city within a day via flight or road. Let's see how that pans out. You share your thoughts in the comment section below. Also let us know if you would like us to decode any other day-to-day -day tech interaction and we will be right back. Do make sure you follow Scalar so you never miss an update from us.